Good afternoon, everybody. Walter Kurt here again with another episode of 3K Consultants Creative Ideas of the Day. Today, I have as my guest, as you can see, uh, the cast and crew from Apache Junction, a movie that uh, just came out and is live in the movie theaters and streaming uh, online as well. Um, I'll let everybody introduce themselves uh, one by one. Uh, so y'all go ahead and introduce yourselves. Hey, I'm Danielle Gross. I play Mary Prim in the movie. Hi, I'm Rookie Lee, and I play Wasco in the movie. How are you? I'm Dom Pontiac. I uh, play Gorn Hollow. Hi, everyone. I'm Juana Choi, and I'm one of the co-executive producers of Apache Junction. Woo-woo! Woo-woo! <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, everybody. So we'll, we'll get started here, and... Uh, um, Let's uh, go ahead and talk about uh, the movie. Um, what what is the premise behind behind the movie, um, and uh, each of your roles in the movie, and then we'll kind of go from there. Let's um, let go ahead, Danielle. You go first. <laughs> um, yeah, I was just going to say, a young, ambitious reporter comes to our town of Outlaws. Um, with the intention of writing a really great story about this crazy place and soon finds herself in a lot of hot water and needs the help of our hero, Jericho Ford, played by Stuart Townsend. Oh, and then my role. Um, so I play Mary Prim. She is a lady of the night um, and Jericho Ford's love interest. Yeah. Um, yeah, strong lady who's who's been there a little bit too long. And you're very wonderful, by the way. Thank you, Ricky. Ricky's also my publicist. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell everybody. I mean, just send me the money, okay? <laughs> Hi, um, I'm Ricky Lee. Um, I play Wasco in the movie. Uh, my my character is uh, Native American, and it's a very interesting character because uh, he has a long history of Jericho Ford, which is Stuart Townsend, and um, we have to be roommates, uh, best friends, and outlaws. Woo -woo. <laughs> uh, my name is Dom Pontiac. Uh, I play Gorn Hollow. Uh, my character is also uh, Native American. Uh, but I'm also uh, a very big outlaw, and uh, my character uh, helps set the tone uh, for the lawlessness in the town. And I go heads up uh, in the classic, in the classic, you know, old dust up Dukeru, um Western <laughs> fight uh, with Stuart Townsend um, and uh, Robert Sims was our fight coordinator who came up with a really nice. Uh, fight scene for us to do. Uh, and the funny thing is we, we filmed this movie in two parts of the year. And the first time when uh, director Justin Lee uh, told me, he said, uh, Pontiac, you know, head to wardrobe. Uh, that, that was the first time I knew that I was going to play the character. But at the time I was over 300 pounds. Um, and then COVID COVID struck and then, you know, we didn't come back for another nine months or so. So it gave me an opportunity to, to, to drop some of the weight because uh, I would have never been able to, to, you know, shoot that fight sequence, you know, hours on end the way that we did uh, carrying over 300 pounds. So um, I'm glad that, that I had the opportunity to bring the weight down and, and shoot the fight scene uh, successfully. And, uh, you know, it set the tone for the, for the rest of the movie and uh, all the characters did a really good job. You did a great job, bro. Thank you. So I think we have, <laughs> I think we have a couple of clips um, from the movie. Um, uh, do you want to start first, Ricky? You want to, you want to do yours? Sure. And, and then we'll go to Danielle's. Sure. I believe the clip that we're going to see is um, the night of, um, 
Annabelle, who is uh, Scott Taylor Compton, and uh, Stuart Townsend Jericho have been in town. Um, Annabelle catches a stray bullet. Jericho brings her back for me to nurse her back to health. So he brings her back to our hideout cabin. Um, it's uh, I doctor her during the day. This is, uh, scene starts at night. Um, and I walk in the scene and Jericho wants to know if she's going to live. She will live. I've seen that look in your eye many times before. Jericho. Jericho, where are you going? Jericho, where are you going? Thank you. To kill someone. It's so obvious. That will solve nothing. I don't need any of your preaching today. Just let me get it done. The clip you have uh, of me is um, it's my character, Mary, talking outside with Annabelle Angel, again, played by Scout Taylor Compton. And we're kind of discussing the life in Apache Junction. And I proposed to her that she might be the solution to, to some of our problems um, and that she might be able to use her story to our benefit. There are people here that are just trying to live their lives. They like having a small piece of earth and they aren't judged every day. We all may be misfits, but it helps go down a bit smoother knowing society and inflicting its view of law and order upon us. So, um, as far as upcoming projects, um, uh, besides besides this, do do any of you have any upcoming projects after after this? I do. <laughs> I'm in something that I'm very excited about. Um, it's a show on stars called Heels. It's set in the world of small time professional wrestling in the deep south. And um, the season finale is actually this Sunday. So tune in. Um, I'm in that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, great show. Really great show. Filmed it in Atlanta, kind of in between our two blocks of shooting, um, Apache Junction. So the timing really worked out. Anybody else got anything going yeah, on? Yeah, well, I'd like to say something about my heart project, and that is um, Whispers in the Wind. Whispers is an, in the Wind is a MMIW film, Murdered and Missing Indigenous Women. Uh, it's a very close subject to my heart. Um, Juana uh, was one of the producers on that film. And uh, Pontiac was one of the, he's our first AD and also a kick-ass actor on that film too. Thank you. You guys are gonna love it. I've seen, we're going to have the final cut probably in the next couple of weeks, and I've seen it. We've been asked to submit Sundance, and um, I'm very proud of it. You guys are going to be really surprised. Awesome. Awesome. Wanna? And, and I'm collaborating on a couple of films right now. Um, we're just kind of in the early stages of development. It's going to be a, a Western in New Mexico, and then I'm doing one that's like a sports film that involves um, uh, MMA fighters. And then there's another one we're doing is, um, it's called Paranormal Investigators. Uh, it, it started out as an indie project, but we're gonna make a feature film out of it. So um, it was filmed in Seattle. Three young kids go and they um, start a business to try to be ghost hunters <laughs> so they find a, a lady that has a spirit in, the, in their house in her house and they follow her around and they you know they're eradicating all the the bad ghosts <laughs> in the house it's kind of comedic and a, a kind of a take on ghostbusters and aliens at the same time so 
So that's going to be fun. I was about to say Ghostbusters. Yeah. <laughs> so that that's in post production and we should be done in a few months. So so y'all mentioned um, about about COVID. Um, how did that how did that affect um, what went on on set? Um, and you know, it's how how long did it take to to film it? And then you know, how did how did COVID interrupt? And did it cause any issues? Um, and if so, how did y'all work around those issues? It's like how didn't it affect anything? <laughs> because I mean, we were like, I th- correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but I think we were like two to three weeks in. Yeah. And then we uh, got a notice. I think we were the last movie that was filming in New Mexico. And they sent a, the governor sent a notice out to the set and said, hey, you guys got to shut down. And we thought, OK, fine, we're going to be back in a couple of days. No problem. Well, as we all know, that didn't happen. Right. <laughs> yeah. And then it was what, eight months later. Um, And funny enough, so we weren't able to go back to our original set in Santa Fe because they had since painted over the entire thing for another production. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, And they weren't going to like reverse everything um, with our budget. So they found a a Western set, uh, set around Joshua Tree and then just did their best to match it. Um, and by that time we only had what, like a week left of filming maybe. And that, you know, we had like a COVID safety protocol person on set every day. We were getting tested, I think every other day. Um, masks, staying mostly outdoors, that sort of thing. Nobody was like going out, hanging out that much, you know, while we were shooting. So it was very, I think we were all very nervous that somebody was gonna come you know, there was going to be a positive test and then we were going to be like, oh my gosh, we're not shutting this down again. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. I think that was a very real fear. I mean, we like every day, you didn't know whether you're going to go to work or not. You know, And that right? was pre-vaccine. Yeah. Yeah. And that's exactly right. You know, uh, it, it was, it was not, it was cool with the producers because they, they pretty much rented this whole hotel and we were all pretty much isolated and like she said, we didn't go out at night. We stayed isolated. We tried to protect each other and watch out for each other, but we got it done, right? Yeah, we did. It was nice. And we tested. And then, and then that last day. Oh, I'm sorry, Pontiac. Well, go ahead, one. Oh, no, that last day when we were over um, at the, the White Horse Ranch over by Joshua Street, we, I think it was, wasn't it two hours <laughs> before the whole state shut us down? So we, we made it right before the shutdown and yeah. we were like high-fiving everybody. Like, yes, we did it. Wait, we in Joshua it. Tree, we got shut down? Yeah, yeah they shut us down. Yeah, they shut the whole state down. Two hours I did not wrapped. know this. Yeah, yeah they were yeah, on yeah. curfew. Yeah, it was every everywhere was shut down at 10 p.m. and you all had to go home and I thought we were house. outside the county where that was in effect. Okay, wow. No, that was yeah. the whole yeah. state. Like yeah. a mandate thing, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that that's because of COVID. So we we really lucked out. We're really blessed that we were able to finish that before the shutdown. So so how how long did how long did you expect it before the COVID um, entered the picture? What what was what what generally for for those of us that that don't know about movie making and, and the like what what generally how long does it generally take to to film a movie like like Apache Junction? Well, this is definitely you know we were definitely on a budget with this, so I would say the timeline was very compressed as far as making a movie goes. Now there you know your locations and everything are very limited. We are basically just shooting on on this Western ranch. Juana, maybe you can do more of that. But I, I think we were supposed to do a total of like three weeks, three and a half weeks. Yeah. 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 It was, a, yeah, it was about four weeks. That, uh, maybe, yeah, you're right, Daniel. Maybe even three and a half. Yeah. We had to really combine that because of the budget. And then we had to bring, um, you know, our main talent back from Costa Rica because he was over there. <laughs> Oh, he wow. didn't want to do the COVID test. <laughs> right. So we had to get around that. So, um, so yeah, it, it was challenging, but we got it done and we're really happy it came out great. 
But it, it was an amazing experience, though. All, all of the talent that was there, all the hard work. Um, we had a couple of different crews uh, because of the, the expansion of time in between. Um, but to, to work with uh, Trey, Trace Atkins, uh, Thomas Jane, um, uh, Trace's his wife, um, they all did uh, phenomenal, you know, and, and Danielle, Scott, um, uh, Ricky, of course, all of our extras, um, myself, uh, Nick, uh, he came in and played a, a wonderful dirt bag uh, in the ranch. Uh, it, that was all really fun. It was all a really good time and uh, how we all came together and, and really put a best foot forward to, to make this picture really happen uh, was, was really nice. I need to get y'all to send me a poster so I can hang it up. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh, Wanda, yes. Do you have a poster? I don't. Yeah. That's one thing I wanted to talk about too, because, um, I'm really someone that, uh, supports empowering women. And this, this film had a lot of great characters, you know, from, you know, the journalist with Scout Taylor Compton and then Danielle's role, um, and I think it's kind of unfortunate they didn't put them on the poster because, you know, they're two strong female characters. And so, yeah, maybe next time <laughs> on the next one, Danielle, we'll get your picture in there. Maybe we can just put a poster together. We'll, we'll make one. We'll, we'll put me and we'll put Scout in it. And yeah, we'll just you'll do get one out. The, yeah, I'll get one so I can hang it like right over there. <laughs> make, yeah, sure, yeah. make sure everybody signs it for me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right, we'll send you yeah. one to the order. Uh, back to what Juana was saying about the women. I, I totally agree with her. Uh, I think the media synopsis got it all wrong, right? Because this film is about two women, two strong, beautiful women that are trying to survive in the Wild West. That's what this film is based on. And these two women, I think all the other central characters revolve around these two women. Um, that's my viewpoint. And that's not my viewpoint. I was told that's Wasco's viewpoint, not mine. Exactly. Well, you can't have the Wild West and gunslingers without women in there. Saloon <laughs> girls. <laughs> you know, right. we're, we're, we're the business women, right, Danielle? <laughs> I mean, if you want something done, ask a, whim a woman to do it. That's, that's right. right. <laughs> <laughs> and we have good plots. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I totally agree with all you guys, but uh, I, I was really proud of this film. And as an indigenous person, I'm, I'm proud uh, to play Wasco because Wasco is not the typical Native American broken English guy. Uh, Wasco is very well educated. Uh, he enjoys a good conversation with a bright lady. And um, actually, he uh, saves the day. Yeah, unlike uh, my character. Uh, yeah. I don't, I don't know if he's that sophisticated, um, but he definitely likes to kick up dust and uh, cause trouble. And um, I, played, I played a few of those characters uh, so far. And... Uh, you know, another one that will be featured in Whispered in the Wind, a real dirt bag I play. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, you know, I, I, I want to be a first AD, and, um, but I'm having a really good uh, opportunity showing up and uh, having some acting uh, thrown my way. And uh, I cherish it every time, and, and uh, I look forward to, to playing more roles. Yeah, you're a damn good actor, man. Thank you. Thank you. Any, any, anything else? I, I really like how the producers and the director and, and everyone involved just brought in a lot of diversity in this film. Uh, just like Pontiac was saying, you know, you'll see me in a couple of scenes where I'm just the townsperson <laughs> running around and in the saloon and stuff. But it's, it's great to have, you know, women, there's natives, cowboys, and then other townspeople that come from a diverse um, ethnicity and background. So I, I really think that's great that, that they're bringing all of that into this film. 
I feel you don't like a, see a, a lot Western of that. Movie, yeah, a Western movie is a really good excuse to do that, right? Because you can really say that this is a, a town of people from everywhere else in the world. So you can put any kind of person in it and it'll make sense. Right. If people mm-hmm. run away from where they're from to go to Apache Junction. Exactly. And I, I really, I want to give a big shout out to all the producers and especially a big shout out to Justin Lee, uh, the, the writer, uh, director, and um, he's one hell of a director. I think we're going to hear a lot more from Justin Lee in our lifetimes. Well, I look, I look, uh, I look forward to, to seeing the movie and uh, I, I appreciate well, you. You haven't seen it? Well, no, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Uh, but but having y'all now, I I I must I must go see it. So yeah. um, well, I I want to say a shout out to the producer Damon Hillen. So yes. he he's the one that brought me right. in and you know helped us. And then also right on, our friend Damon. Lorena. Don't forget Lorena. Oh yeah, Lorena. <laughs> she's awesome. Another strong you, female. And Scout, we love you, Scout. And Scout, thank you. Great Stuart, job. But also and butt, Stuart. Yeah. This is a great Buffalo. cast and crew. Yeah, everybody worked well together. And, you know, we just put a really good product out there. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Yeah, thank, thank you. you for your message, Damon. Damon sent yeah, me. Thank you very much. Yeah. Appreciate it. And he sent me the most uh, inspiring reply. So thank you, Damon. I appreciate that. Yeah. I thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Well, like I said, I, I, I really appreciate y'all coming on uh, and sharing uh, sharing your movie with us, um, sharing your your thoughts and uh, uh, adventures, per se. And uh, as I always say at, at the end of these, love, kindness, and stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.